nestled in the heart of the United States, Denver, the capital of Colorado. In this affluent residential area of the city, you're going to put the potatoes right back in that pot. Kathy and her sons are preparing to welcome some guests for the first time for a dinner that may not be so pleasant. Their aim? To help guests become more aware of their racism. Back up, silly girl. Back up. Come on. Come on in. How are you guys? Come on in. Welcome, welcome. Let me get her out of the way. That's Come okay. on, Lou. Happy. Nice to meet you, nice Barbara. To meet you too. How are you? Carol. Nice to meet nice you, to Carol. Meet you. These women, all white, belong to the local petty bourgeoisie. They're psychologists, teachers, and business executives like Margaret, who looks a bit uncomfortable. I'm terrified. Terrified. Why? Because I'm in a in a uh, group of people I've never met talking about a very um, sensitive, potentially volatile topic. I do think every white person in the United States is racist. I'm a racist and my mother, I think I said it was a racist, wonderful person, wonderful lady. I mean, that's a, I think, I think there's no mixing up. You can be a really good person and still be racist. Each of them paid $400 to these two women, the creators of this unique dinner party experience. Saira, of Indian origin, is a democratic political activist. Regina works in real estate. Hello there. Hi. 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 I'm so Their I'm dinners so are exclusive to women, like who are supposedly more open to change than men. Right from the aperitif, Regina pushes them to the limit. How many of you white people would change places with me? And why not? Many Americans believe that the system has always favored white people and that racism is therefore a fact of life in the country. Why wouldn't you do that? Because I wouldn't want to be pulled over 30 times a year. Walking in the store, have yeah. people watching yeah. you, walking down the street, have people watching you. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah, all the stereotypes, assumptions. You know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know you don't want it for you. So why are you okay with it happening to a large percentage of your neighbors? And, and kids need According to, to them, many and white people are guilty of racism even unconsciously, including this adoptive mother. So that's why we do this. I have a black son, and I recognize that that, that doesn't make, you know, that doesn't exempt me from racism. So people of color... For half an hour, Saira and Regina challenge the women. While you're here, or what you hope to accomplish, profile uh, Let's get started, and then we can pause. At dinner time, each person is asked to confess an example of a racist act or thought that they have had. That we have what we need. The police had pulled over this car and there were four or five young black people standing by the car. And I thought, wow, I wonder what they did. For her, merely suspecting black people of having committed a crime is a fault. Margaret doesn't seem to understand much about it. Surrounding how I need to think Margaret, you Actually, Margaret, you didn't say yours. What? Your racist thing, thing that you've done thought about or I done. You have yeah. something inside of you that's not quite, like, that's racist. So you must have, you must have examples in your own life. Well, I also work in environmental engineering. I have absolutely no people of color or minimal people of color, possibly the exclusion of being slightly Hispanic. Oh, no. I mean, Saira doesn't like, like her attitude. <laughs> I can say a racist thing you've done because it just happened. When you just talk to me the way you just did, this is how white women talk to us all the time. These are microaggressions. Mm -hmm. When I say the exact same thing to my white girlfriend who says the same exact thing. I don't care if you talk to everybody like that. Okay. Right? The way you just spoke to me was straight up white supremacy. You actually just answered with racism. White supremacy so is said to be hidden in innocuous phrases and banal behavior. The smallest things could be considered racist. It's enough that a person from a minority group feels insulted. Absolutely. Sounding terribly white. I don't know that I was all that racist to start with, but 
I also would be more aware or hyper aware of my thoughts or reactions to circumstances that would be racist. Tonight, thanks to this dinner, these women have become woke. To be woke is to be aware of the discrimination suffered by minorities. This terminology originated in universities and became popular after the death of George Floyd, an African-American man killed by a white police officer. Mama! 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 One of the front pouches. Please! Please, I can't breathe! Please, man! The images of his pain, broadcast around the world, set the American people in motion. Citizen demonstrations were led by Black Lives Matter, some turning into riots. The woke ideology became radical and identity-based. You don't care about my life, you're saying that Black Lives don't matter, then like, your life doesn't matter. In the name of fighting inequality, the woke movement strives to create a society based on racial and gender identity. I don't see that. We're all the same, but we're not all the same. The importance of color and race and what it makes. Encouraged by the democratic left, there are signs of the movement in the highest institutions of the country, such as the mayor of New York. We live in a white supremacist society, so white men hold the most privileged. These ideas are spreading, particularly among children in schools. You gonna deliberately teach kids? This white kid right here got it better than you because he's white? You gonna personally tell a white kid? Oh, the black people are all down to suppress. Those who oppose this ideology are considered racist and are cancelled, censored and socially eliminated. Just because I'm a white, older man, that I'm racist? By favoring minorities at all costs, identity politics has created new inequalities, particularly in sport. From what planet are you from? I mean, to think it's okay that boys would compete with girls in a track meet. No matter what I was born or what the doctors claim that I, I am, I'm a woman. George Floyd's own brother denounced the excess of the movement. So it's not even about race. It's just about these police officers in these different areas doing the right thing. An investigation into America in the midst of an identity crisis. New York, one of the most cosmopolitan cities in the world with over 800 languages spoken. Politically, it has been left-wing and democratic for almost a century. Woke ideology has almost become a religion in the town hall, especially in the Human Rights Commission, which counters racism. Hi, David. Alicia McCauley has been working for three years on these boxes, filled with the 11,000 complaints of discrimination received each year. In New York, a sideways glance could be considered discriminatory and lead to prosecution. Nico, can you come to the training at 10? We're doing a race and color training. Sure. Cool. Here, race and skin color are such important issues that they're the subject of mandatory training for employees. And the tone is set right from the beginning. Before we get started, we want to acknowledge and recognize that we are on the unceded land of the Lenape people. So, we get to our definition of racism. Racism is the use of power held by a privileged group to perpetuate oppression, exclusion, and discrimination based on race. It's against discrimination. In their eyes, privilege is the main reason for racism. Civil rights laws, public accommodation, which a privilege is an advantage enjoyed by a group of people that is not available to everyone. For example, I identify as a cisgender black man. So I would say I would be privileged in terms of my gender, but not because of my skin color. I think it's important to be aware of your privilege and how your privilege affects other people. 
Like, for instance, as a, a cishet white woman, like, society is going to give me privileges over other people. Like, I, for instance, can walk into a store and I'm not worried about being followed around by a security guard, as an example. Um, but also, like, as a woman, if I'm in a male-dominated space, then those people, if they're not recognizing their privilege, could be marginalizing me. Who would be the most privileged category? I don't think we want to rank privilege. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we live in a patriarchy. We live in a white supremacist society. So I would say, like, cishet white men hold the most privileged. There are no white men around the table. The least privileged categories are recruited as a priority. Hispanics, blacks, or transgender, like Chanel, dressed in red. As in the government of Democratic President Joe Biden, minorities are represented at a level never seen before in American history. With, for example, Kamala Harris, the first mixed-race woman vice president. Or Pete Buttigieg, openly gay. In the commission, some 40 lawyers, such as Catherine Greenberg, prosecute individuals, institutions or companies suspected of discriminatory practices. Discrimination can include treating somebody less well, which means a whole plethora of things. It can mean just one discriminatory comment. It can mean shunning or refusing to look at a person in a workplace or in a store. <laughs> This is called a microaggression. Like in this video. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. This transgender woman did not appreciate being called Mr. Right beforehand, you fucking said, sir. Motherfucker, take it outside. If you want to call me sir again, I will show you a fucking sir. I apologize. Motherfucker. I apologize now. Under New York law, the vendor could be fined up to 250,000 euros. The commission has many weapons at its disposal to protect minorities. I need the corporate number now. One case was made against Prada, the famous luxury brand. There was no complaint. Catherine Greenberg took it upon herself to open an investigation after the sale of a monkey figurine. When that image was brought to our attention here as an agency, there was a general reaction of shock. Do you have the images? I don't know that I want to show an oh, image okay. like that, to be honest. It hurts the people who see it, and I, I don't want to be the decider in showing that image to the people who might view your film. This is the figurine. With its prominent lips, this monkey figurine resembles racist cliches used to represent black people. The brand immediately removed the figurines from its shops, but the commission imposed strict measures. More diversity in its recruitment, racism awareness training, and the creation of a diversity officer position. After work, Alicia and Chanel often go out with their friend Lala, a transgender rights activist. In New York, they can freely be themselves, even though they are often challenged on the street. What happened, baby? I said I got a treat. Oh! <laughs> a rather nice show of attention, but one that Chanel saw as a microaggression. It could be okay, but it can also be shady, because it's like you're you're, it's like you're outing me out without my permission. It was a little offensive. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. For these black transgender women, noticing their differences is insulting, but not doing so is racist. 
the importance of color and race and what it makes. Where other people use it to opt out to say, I don't see race and color, but won't acknowledge that there has been racism, that there has been harm, and that it's continuing to happen. There are people who don't, I don't see that. We're all the same. No, we're not all the same. You, if you're a white person talking to a black person, you clearly know that that color is going to grant you a privilege that I never got, simply because of the, you were born that color. But my, my ancestors have created a system that continues to benefit me over other people. I continue to yes. reap the privileges of a racist society. So I am responsible because for of the what privilege. my ancestors yes. have done. I am responsible for dismantling that system. And if I'm not actively working to take it apart, then I'm helping it. To bring down this system, the New York City Council is not content with simply enacting laws. It's now targeting young people and spreading woke ideas in many schools. The message is simple to understand. In American society, whites have always been the oppressors. And blacks, their victims. That's what students at Grace Church, one of the most expensive religious schools in Manhattan, are learning. Paul Rossi, a mathematics teacher, worked there for nine years. Politically left-wing, he rebelled against the anti-racist teachings of his high school. I began to see race take over the mindset of the students to a degree that they were explaining everything through the lens of race. They were seeing race as the most important part of who they were in society, simply because their ancestors looked like them and they had certain privileges. If you were a black student, you were led to anticipate that your prospects in life were less than or worse than someone who had privileges. These ideas must be propagated by all teachers in all subjects. In 2019, school curricula was even changed to make children aware of their differences from an early age. So this is a kindergarten curriculum and they start by introducing colors to the children. It seems rather innocent, but what they do is they link it to skin color and the importance of skin color. The reason for all of this from the age of six months, your child is racist and we have to do something about it. And this continues through primary school into secondary school. The students learn that their country has been racist since its foundation. Racism is a primary institution of the US. And that white people are guilty of the worst atrocities. To redeem themselves, they must become activists. How we may combat systemic inequality. A teacher who was telling all the white children, what are you going to do for black liberation? You're asking um, a student to take on this burden of history. At the same time, the black students are thinking, well, now I have to rely on my oppressor to liberate me? What is that? Last April, Paul left his teaching post at Grace Church. He's now a well-known whistleblower for making a conversation public with George Davison, the headmaster of his school. In it, he acknowledged that the anti-racist teachings were discriminating against his white students. I'm agreeing with you that there has been a demonization. Okay, so you agree that you we're demonizing kids? We're demonizing um, kid, we're, we're demonizing white people for being born. And, uh, and are some of our and students white right. people? No. Yes. One student in the second grade was traumatized by two years of discrimination at Grace Church. Um, yeah. finishing up my math homework. According to him, the school had established a real segregation where whites were humiliated daily. 
They had one speaker who came in and was only for the white students, and then one speaker who came in was for all the uh, black identifying students. And they told you why you were bad for an hour, and then if you dared to disagree with them, you were crucified. In some classes, boys and girls were separated. I remember in the boys' room, it was talking about toxic masculinity and how that hurts everybody there. And it was uh, 10 minutes of just all the girls complaining. We basically learned about microaggressions, which I still can't define, even after a semester of talking about it nonstop. How apparently holding a door open for somebody can be sexist, or asking where are you from is racist. How did you feel? Terrible. I mean, I had to... I had to sit there and just basically be berated all day, every day, and I couldn't do anything back. Why you want it is not to be recognized on camera? It, it would be dangerous. It would be socially dangerous. It would be academically dangerous. It. There's too much to lose. It's, it's a very intolerant society right now. That's why a lot of parents that are terrified right now, and, you know, some parents are afraid to speak up. I've been one of them. But he didn't say anything offensive. <laughs> you don't have to say anything offensive. You just have to disagree. <laughs> you just have to not go along with the narrative. This is offensive enough. What? Just white skin. Yeah. Shame on you! Shame on you! These woke teachings sparked controversy, like here in the state of Virginia. In this school board meeting, parents of the students protested. A Republican senator is leading the charge. I am disgusted by your bigotry and your depravity. <laughs> A father was arrested by the police. Parents of African American students are also concerned that their children are being victimized. You gonna deliberately teach kids this white kid right here got it better than you because he white? You gonna purposely tell a white kid, oh, the black people are all down to suppress? How do I have two medical degrees if I'm sitting here oppressed? Some Afro-Americans find this ideology degrading. In New York, in order to have more black students in the best high schools, a reform was enacted to facilitate the admission conditions, to the detriment of students of Asian origin. As this Department of Education document shows, the reform would reduce Asian admissions from 50 to 30 percent and increase black admissions from 3 to 19 percent. However, the Asian community is also a minority that faces discrimination, and the number of racist attacks against them has recently exploded often against the poorest in New York. The Woke City Council, which is supposed to fight racism, favors Afro-Americans whilst discriminating against Asians. Some suggest this may be linked to America's slave-owning past. Denver, Colorado. In the city's historic district, a typical Victorian house. Lotta's family is one of the oldest in Denver. When her mother died, she discovered a dark family secret in this notebook dating back to 1865. Edie, age 45, value $800. Julia, age 26, value $1,400. Cornelius, age eight, $500. Owner, William Hayes Paxton, my second great grandfather. In total, he owned 44 slaves, a side of her family history she did not know existed. I 
can't even explain what it is like to turn the page and see a list of names, this list of names and values. Um, it was devastating. As for her grandmother who raised her, the shock was even greater. She belonged to a white supremacist movement which terrorized and murdered many black people, the Ku Klux Klan. You want to think of your grandmother as a wonderful person. You want to love your grandmother. It's very painful um, to discover that your family has done, um, participated in really what are crimes against humanity. Stricken with guilt, Lotta advocates for financial reparations for black people. She decided to give part of her fortune to Brianna, a 28-year-old parliamentary assistant. They met at a conference on reparations. I said, I'll help you. So I committed right then, even though I just met Brianna two minutes beforehand, I committed to helping her pay off her student debt. Surely this isn't real, isn't happening. Did you not just think that she's crazy, maybe? Not really. No? Um, it was more of a, great, finally. <laughs> Give me what is owed kind of thing. Um, from like, you know, from whether it had been her or anyone else. Um, it was like, yes, I'll take that, thank you. <laughs> Today, she has already given her $100,000 and is about to buy her a house. Were you surprised that we've become friends? No. And I say that because growing up, I've always floated between friend groups, but I've always had the knack of befriending the kind of oddball people, or the people that people consider oddball. Thank you. <laughs> a bill is underway to have the federal state rectify 246 years of slavery and segregation suffered by its black population. The amount would be about $12 trillion, half of the country's public debt. Across America, the guilt is enormous, and it has led to some astonishing scenes after George Floyd's death, like here in Texas. Humbling ourselves before you. Yes, Lord. That's right. You understand? Right. Keep going, man. Keep it coming, man. You understand? Right. Keep it coming. Only a couple more, two more. In this footage, this young couple kisses the boots of black supremacists. And what's your name? Skylar. Skylar and Zeth. And Zeth. How can such behaviors be explained? Where does the American woke movement come from? We head to Los Angeles, California, the most progressive state in the country, at the forefront of measures that promote diversity and inclusion of minorities. In the 1960s, the civil rights movement for African Americans began at the state's top universities, such as Berkeley. Sixty years later, the woke protest also started with students. As at UCLA, the University of California in Los Angeles, where 25 Nobel Prize winners have studied, the students represent the elite and the future of America. But after George Floyd's death in 2020, the students revolted. It is our last the leader of these protests was Tristan Shaw, 
president of the Black Association, a graduate student in African American studies. Where's life? There are Raymond's blue pellets. We are here to make change, and it is important for y'all to know that. We don't believe in reform, but we do believe in abolition democracy. It's important for us to understand that. Something has to grow and be built in its place. Abolition democracy, it, it handles that, right? It is a part of deconstruction and reconstruction. University campus. Hey, yes, sir. How you doing, man? Good. I like your shirt. I like your shirt. Thank you. We are here. <laughs> Today, Tristan handed over his position as president to Ashton Pemberton, a final year student. Their fight continues on social media. Every week, they host a very popular podcast. Yes, Black! And we like our podcast like we like our win. Black! <laughs> that was nice. Was, I like that. It was, bro. I just want to ask you a question, Scott, but Pete. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean to be unapologetically black? Oh, man. The blackness for me is like that, that strength and that pain that, that resolve the fact that you've done everything that you can do to destroy me, and I'm still not only doing great, but I'm doing better than you. I, I felt like I knew what it meant to be black because I had also been tailed around stores and accused of stealing and different things like that, right? And I was like, okay, like this is what it means to be black in America more than anything. At their elite university, only 3.5% of the students are African American. That was it, boy. Yes. Wow. This low proportion yes. is said to be related so to the discrimination yeah. they face. I was up. There is something so real about being black and having like having your life on the line all the time. Yeah. But we we will wake up tomorrow and feel that way. Our kids, our kids will feel that way. Our families will feel that way. Welcome to the world that a lot of black people live in. And not even welcome to the world, welcome to the fear and paranoia that we walk around with. For these young Afro-Americans, hair is another very sensitive subject. Many of them feel discriminated against because of it from a very young age. You got kids getting suspended for coming to school with braids in their hair, ponytails, barrettes. You got kids getting suspended for having designs in their hair. <laughs> hair is an important identity and cultural marker, and there's no question of those who are not black appropriating its codes. Where Kim Kardashian gets braids today? <laughs> make a shirt, a t-shirt with her wearing braids and sell that thing online and make millions of dollars today. The Armenian-born reality TV star has been heavily criticized for wearing African braids in 2018. I think that when we think about cultural appropriation, what we have to think about are ways to compensate black people who've been giving America culture uh, since we've been here. The culture that has been stolen from us and profited um, off of by other cultures. They love our culture, but hate us. That's a culture butcher. Right. And it's America. I was like, is holding me back uh -huh. I wonder is it because I'm black oh, somebody tell me what can I do will I survive or will I die A week after the death of George Floyd and the ensuing mobilization, a scandal broke out at UCLA. It started with an economics professor who was accused of being racist. A year and a half later, Gordon Klein still receives death threats and remains under police protection. Just because I'm a white, older man, that I'm racist and that at the extreme, physical harm should come to me? After 40 years of serving, never one complaint in 40 years about anything racial. 
It all started with an email written by one of his white students. Following the shock of George Floyd's death, he was asked to grade the black students with more compassion and leniency than the other students. I was shocked that somebody in my class would label black students to be inferior emotionally and intellectually and would suggest that I should adjust based on that. Unlike other teachers who agreed to do so, he refused. And in his email response, he uses the words of Martin Luther King. No one should be judged by the color of their skin. The use of this quote ignited the fire. For the world to have now changed, where instead of you getting thumbs up that as a white person, you admire Martin Luther King. I was uh, stealing the black voice. That's so disrespectful because it, it appropriates the image and the, the words of Dr. Martin Luther King for the complete opposite of what he's fighting for. Like, it, it's, it's so colorblind. I think, and colorblindness is a racism. To minimize, like, our struggle, like, that is a racism. A petition calling for his dismissal soon gathered 25,000 signatures. So the university suspended him and his colleagues turned their backs on him. He still receives anonymous phone calls and death threats. The FBI advises him to protect himself. I don't think anyone should threaten anyone's life. But I can understand someone in 2020, right after George Floyd was killed, after um, Breonna Taylor was killed, after we're, we're saturated with all of these images of black death, for someone to say, well, I want you to die too. Like, if you think that like, you don't care about this, then like, you don't care about my life. You're saying that black lives don't matter, then like, your life doesn't matter. Today, Gordon remains locked up at home, still unable to return to the campus. He's a broken man who has let himself go. He's developed physical and mental health problems. What he has suffered is the notorious cancel culture. All those who do not conform to the woke diktats are systematically seen as racist and are canceled, censored and socially eliminated. Even former Democratic President Barack Obama denounces cancel culture. Never compromised and like if I tweet or hashtag about how you didn't do something right or used the word wrong verb or then I can sit back and feel pretty good about myself because man, you see how woke I was? I called you out. <laughs> that's not, that's not activism. That, that's not bringing about change. On one side, the woke left with radical activists from Black Lives Matter. Fuck this shit, turn this shit up. On the other side, white supremacists who support Donald Trump and march on the Capitol. USA! 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 American society seems more fractured than ever. We head back to New York. One man would like to unite these two sides of America. He has strongly opposed the violence that broke out following the death of George Floyd. This isn't just any man. This is Terence Floyd, George's brother. Every race was calling his name, every race. There wasn't no division there. I'm, I'm not about hate, I'm not about division. You know, that's, that's it. We all human and we need to come together, understand our purpose and work together. And I, that, that's the movement I am. That's my movement. The woke movement got their movement. What's your point of view about the police? My, my point of view? Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of people are shocked. They're, they're, they're part of the community too. You know, they're not, they, 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 that's their occupation. Because I have a son that actually came to me and wanted to be a police officer. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I, you know, I was wondering why he asked me. And he said, well, with everything going on, I don't want you to look at me different. I said, I won't look at you different because I need you to go in there and, ch and help me change the narrative. At the foot of his brother's statue, photos of other African-Americans killed by the police were placed. Man. And, and yet, still, these are all black and brown men, you know? I mean, don't get, don't get me wrong. I, I was somewhere that they, he did a funeral for an, a Caucasian young man, young boy that got shot by the police. So it's not even about race. It's just about these police officers in these different areas doing the right thing. On the 24th of June, the statue of George Floyd was defaced by a white right-wing activist. The reconciliation that Terence Floyd strives for seems to be a long way off. However, in America, race is not the only identity marker that holds importance. The woke also advocate for the inclusion of sexual and gender minorities. Male, female, in between, or a bit of both. Each individual can choose his or her own identity. Back to Denver, to the capital, where the laws of this traditionally Republican state are passed. In 2017, a historic election took place in America. Morning, Kathy. Hi, how are you? Good. Can I go first? Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. I mean, this should be quick, right? Thank you. A man turned woman, a transgender person, is elected as a member of parliament. The committee will come to order. With your unanimous Rihanna Titon, a scientist who used to be a volunteer firefighter, made her transition just five years ago. And in your building. Anyone opposed? No. All right, well, the ayes have it. Senate Bill 171 is adopted. Transgender people make up only 0.6% of the American population. So finding herself at the head of her country's government is a strong symbol for her. There would be very few of these people who would be supportive of someone like me. We've always had to hide in the shadows and, and in the closet, and now, uh, I think we see a little bit of hope coming through, and I think that's what really the woke movement really is about. We're tired of taking the back seat. It's time for us to get into the front seat and start driving. So whenever she can, Brianna doesn't hesitate to assume her role as a woke activist. A lot of the schools ask for me to come, um, and you know, I have always tell everybody, hey, you know, I'm available to come. Please ask me to come. Today, she came to support a public college that is implementing her ideas. Hello. It is such an honor to meet you. An honor to meet you, too. Thanks for very much. The headmaster welcomes her warmly. Uh, your work is making a big difference for our kids and our schools and for people like me. Excellent. You know, as a uh, gay man, very special at Hamilton. The school nurse also claims to be committed to the LGBTQ cause. My son, who's a trans male, mm -hmm. um, is a ninth grader this Oh, year. okay. And when he heard all the stuff we were doing here, he was like, can I come to your school? And so he came all the way down with me. Wow. School should be a welcoming place. Exactly. What they are most proud of in their college is rather unexpected. The restrooms are... There's so much more than a restroom. LGBTQ neutral toilets for students who identify as neither boy nor girl. Lots of positive messages, it's really nice. Because I know like a lot of times, things on the wall of the bathroom are not always, <laughs> not always good things. And, that, and I appreciate this too, menstrual hygiene products. As this tweet from Tampax outlines, it's not just women who get their periods. 
a rallying message for the woke ideology. And we have to say, well, if you menstruate, you're a woman, you know, you're denying somebody else's existence. Who? Transgender male people. They are born as females, and they present themselves and as a male person. And if they want to have a baby, they can, if they want to. In the college library, diversity is promoted everywhere. Cool. Well, that's a cool space. The literature is on theme. On display, a woke comic. books on the struggles of the LGBTQ community and a biography of Caitlyn Jenner, the most famous American transgender person, ex-stepfather to the Kardashian daughters. How's it going? Good. Good. In fifth grade, these students are exploring their sexual and gender identity and have prepared for their meeting with Brianna. Logan. Logan, good to meet you all. What do you like about the school? Here. I went to another middle school and I noticed that they weren't as welcoming as the school when it comes to the LGBTQ community. Any other school wasn't like that? No. No. And that's a good thing to be yourself in your own private space when you can, but there's a, a lot of risks involved and that can, also, that can cause embarrassment. As a person, I've had a lot of um, struggles figuring out my sexuality. I have, I'm, I'm still not really sure. I, for a while, I thought that I was gay. How many gender identities exist? Uh, I don't know if I have a number count. Yeah, no. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's, there's plenty. Bisexual, pansexual, asexual, intersexual, demisexual. With all these sexual identities and possible genders, it can be difficult to find one's way around. So much so that in sport, transgender women are allowed to compete in the women's categories. Like Terry Miller, a university champion sprinter, or Cece Telfer, who won the 400 meter hurdles at the university championships in 2019. Or Veronica Ivy, two time world champion in track cycling. The fact that men who have become women are winning in women's competitions is causing huge controversy. As in the US Congress last February, between a Republican senator and a member of the Biden administration. Privilege to make sure that we're following. Do you think it's fair to have boys running in the girls' track, mate? I understand that there are a lot of concerns about that, and I believe schools should offer the opportunity for students to engage in extracurricular activities, even if they're transgender. I think that's their right. Yeah. From what planet are you from? I mean, to think it's OK that boys would compete with girls in a track meet, that that somehow would be fair. Respectfully, Senator, I think I answered the question. Veronica Ivey's two world titles have created such a scandal and brought her so much hatred that she prefers to keep her whereabouts hidden. She became a woman about 10 years ago. After a major operation, she continues to take daily treatment that reduces her male hormones. The male body has a bigger strength than the female body. What do you think about that? The question isn't, are male bodies bigger than female bodies, but are trans women, trans female bodies bigger than cis female, cis women's bodies? Trans women are female, like actually female. Um, medically female, legally female. My doctors treat me as any other female. Driver's license, passport, my racing licenses all say female. This university professor of philosophy has been a sportswoman all her life and she feels she has legitimately earned her world championship title in Great Britain in 2019. What, it's you? Yep. Right now is the traditional stare down. This is the moment I knew I'd won before we even started because her reaction to me showed me that she already thought she was gonna lose. 
Veronica won the gold medal with flying colours and even broke the world speed record in her category at nearly 60 kilometres per hour. And then um, they're going to hand me a flag right here. I got the trans flag. This title has made her many enemies. You have to learn how to live with being hated. So I have stalkers, I get death threats, um, I get people saying that I don't belong in sport, but I also get like messages of support, but also people telling me that, wow, I went to the gym for the first time. I bought a bike and started riding because I saw you. So that's what gets me through the hate. She reportedly received 100,000 hateful comments on Twitter. But there is one she's proud of, from Donald Trump Jr., Donald Trump's son. Transgender cyclist who set women's world record wouldn't have qualified for men's championship, but I'm not a man, so why would I have qualified. My honest reaction was to laugh because um, I'm quite sure that Donald Trump Jr. is not a feminist who cares about women's sport at all. Veronica is 39 years old, single, and lives with her mother, who has always been on her side. Basically, and what I've felt all the way along is she's my child. I don't care which way she wants to go, whatever, whatever happens. I mean, she'd be purple, blue, pink. I mean, it's just, it, it, she's my child. What is it to be a woman? <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> so I don't think it's a good question. I don't, because I think people want it to be objective and clear and there to be clear criteria. And I think that's impossible. And I think we need to accept that. And I think that's a difficult thing to accept. Gender is more beautiful and more complex than what is a man, what is a woman. So who are women? The people who say they are, I think is the easier way to go about it. The freedom to choose your own gender identity. A real revolution in society is underway. The woke ideology seems to have launched a real war of the sexes and races in the United States. A radicalization of identity that could pose a real danger to democracy. <laughs>